Yeah, this one right here. I, I want to watch this video, why you're not enjoying MMOs anymore. Uh, do you guys feel like you're not having fun in MMOs anymore? Because I, I do feel like this is an important video to, to watch. I'm curious. It's an interesting video. Yes. Okay. All right. Let me see it. Uh, I, I've really, I've waited for quite a while to watch this one. So uh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and this is MM Opinion, a bite-sized show where we talk about topics relevant to the MMORPG gaming landscape, and I give my opinion this on is, them. Each is, week yeah, we'll look at another question or point of view within the industry and analyse it. Yeah, These videos schools. are kept as short as I can make them, but long enough to hopefully generate a discussion. If you have a question or theory you want discussed, leave it in the comments below, and as usual, a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters oh, and at the Twitch beginning. who make my channel okay. possible. Right, let's begin. Let's Today go. I'd like to to address the opinion held by several older MMO players that new MMO games just aren't as fun as the old ones. That the whole genre was better in the old days. I'd also like to explain why yeah. you are constantly searching for a new MMO and never quite finding the right one. Now the rather prevalent okay. school of thought that back in the good old days MMOs the were more enjoyable, yeah. more social and some would say more real than the games we have today is quite a popular one. I've read no end of comments I from agree. older gamers who like to berate I, I the that, newer yeah. generation for having the audacity to enjoy games like World of Warcraft or RuneScape or the Oh, Elder you're talking about boomers? You're talking about like fucking Ultima Online EverQuest boomers? All oh, those guys, man. Listen, those guys are assholes. Like, I used to go to the card shop and I'd see these guys. And, and they're all fucking, they're all old as shit. They're jaded about everything. They have strong opinions about literally every subject, even something they just heard of. They already have a strong opinion about it. Like, these guys, no, no, no. No, these guys, trust me, you ever been to a card shop back in the fucking 2000s? You know that these guys were everywhere. Because they're ah, just geez. not as good as the old stuff. So let's yeah. look at the common arguments for this and then I'll explain my thoughts. Okay. There is a belief among many older MMO gamers, yes. especially that older MMOs such as EverQuest, Tibia, Asheron's Call, or Ultima Online were the peak of the genre, All the right. pinnacle of the social online adventure game and everything that came after was rubbish. Even this while? is generally argued to have happened because of games becoming easier, travel between places taking less time, yeah. end game items being less effort to achieve, or the appearance of guides and walkthroughs, trivializing the mechanics of dungeons and bosses, and while there is absolutely a that discussion to have on all to of an those, extent, that I is true. don't actually feel that's the most important aspect for why people feel the way they do. Yeah. Because I don't actually think the mechanical changes within the genre are the biggest factor here. No. The advancements, the simplification, no. the changes, while important, they're not the reason you're not having as much fun anymore. I've already made videos discussing I think one reason, like, if you played Ultima Online, the reason why you're not having too much fun anymore is if you're old enough to play Ultima Online, you're 53 years old now, and you have erectile dysfunction. Like, you're not having fun doing anything. It's not the game's fault. Like, don't blame that shit on the game. No, really, like... like <laughs> Let's be real. Travel and high graphics and the Says concept you, of up. end game and how these design decisions can negatively affect gameplay. But even with all that said, I honestly think the single biggest factor in your enjoyment of an MMO okay. is the lifestyle you have outside of the game. Now, if you want to immediately argue back and scream, yeah. no, games are getting worse, that's understandable. But please, just consider the next 10 minutes. Then if you still disagree after my reasoning, leave a comment below explaining why. No, I, I, I agree with this. I, I do. I think that, like, a lot of people, whenever they think that they miss classic WoW, what they really miss is classic, you know, fucking being 16 years old. Like, I remember whenever I was 16 years old playing WoW, I had two things I was worried about. Playing WoW... I had one thing I was worried about. That was it. That was the only thing I ever was worried about. Like, I never gave a fuck. Like, that's the real truth. And, and like, nostalgia, like, it's so hard to separate nostalgia from reality. Because it's like, how many times you ever go back, you see, like, oh, man, dude, this game had such good graphics. And you come back, and it's like, wow, it didn't at all. I was fucking eight years old, and I was just stupid. You know, like, I had that happen a dozen times. 
and especially Ocarina of Time was the best example for me. And, and like Pikmin was another one, right? I thought it was like fucking pixel perfect back then. And you miss the time that you had. Like, and like, I know that. Like, I'm not afraid. I'm not embarrassed to say that. I miss being a kid, right? Like, I never had to worry about fucking anything. I didn't have to worry about gray hairs. I didn't have to worry about, um, uh, paying for a house. I didn't have to worry about, like, a car. Like, now, like, my car has to get, like, inspected. Like, I have to think about that. Like, I have to think about that back then. I could just think about, like, man, I gotta hit 37, dude. I gotta start farming for my mount. And also, whenever you're young, you don't really think about the fact that you're wasting your fucking time. Like, now that you're, like, fucking, you're getting into, like, your late 20s, your early 30s, you, you see, like, your friends, and they've got, like, a car and, like, a family and, like, maybe a kid or something, and you're like, that's cool, but I have a mount in the game. And y you feel dumber for doing it whenever you get older. And it, it's a, rea nah, it's a reality check. Sag, next topic. I know, bro, like, it's fucking brutal. It's fucking brutal. Like, I wish that I... You know how they have, like, the hyperbolic time chamber in Dragon Ball Z? Can we please invent one of those? Elon Musk, can we please get that going? Because, like, I... I let, let's go. It's time to face reality, bros. It sucks, man. And, like, it's like whenever you're in neat and you're 19 years old and you just get to chill and hang out and it's just like an extended summer break, it's really cool. But, like, at a certain point, the indulgence becomes, uh, it, it, it becomes a withdrawal on your soul. It, it, it sucks. I, I wish I could just stop time. Like, let's just uh, pause. Okay, good. <laughs> stop. <laughs> just stick with this. It's a hard pill to swallow? Yeah, it sucks. It fucking sucks. The guy's right. But I do think video games, some video games were like way better back then, too, as well. Like, there are some Super Nintendo games fucking godly. Like, I'm sorry, Secret of Mana, um, uh, fucking, like, Chrono Trigger, uh, Super Mario RPG, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island. Like, these are godly games that are objectively incredible, and they will be incredible. Super Metroid, there's another one. Um, fucking, uh, these are games that will be good forever. In a hundred years, I swear to God, in a hundred fucking years, there are going to be people playing Super Metroid. In a hundred years, there are going to be people that are playing Super Mario World. And I have no doubt in my mind that's the case. I spoke to many people who all argued that the modern MMOs were dumbed down chess, yeah. and easy and less fun than before. Although fun yeah. is a subjective thing and almost impossible to define. It so is subjective. I asked them to explain to me their greatest experience or Ooh, adventure or green. memory within an MMO, their favorite moment of the genre. Yeah. And I'd like you to do this now as well. Just think, what was the most fun you ever had within an MMO? If you could go back and relive a moment in your MMO life, what would it be? A snapshot, a specific time period, and more importantly, why? I've asked this question to many people, and the Okay. I have a very, very specific time of what that is. At the end of Burning Crusade, uh, towards the middle, actually, Burning Crusade, I joined a guild. It was called Overdose. It was the guild I was talking about earlier. Overdose at that time was uh, declining, right? Uh, you know, our, our rankings were going down. Their rankings were going down. And uh, the guild was being seen more and more as a has-been guild. At that point, I joined... And I wasn't really much of a raider. I raided at the very end with them. But other than that, I was just kind of a goofball that showed up in the guild. And I did five mans with them occasionally and maybe Karazhan. Uh, I initially got invited in. And the, the wake-up call was we actually had another guild on the server that killed Brutalis pre-nerf before us. And before then, we were the top alliance guild on the server. The only other guild that was ahead of us was Ascent, and Ascent got World First Ragnaros, okay? So we were still really fucking good. Uh, we didn't even count Ascent. And we were even ahead of Ascent in Vanilla WoW. They were. So anyway, um, at, at, in like Nax. Anyway, this other guild that we considered vastly below us killed Brutalis before we did. And this was like the biggest wake-up call, and everybody in the guild got it together, and we said, fuck this. We're going to go hardcore. We're going to go big dick mode. And we're going to kill that boss. And that night they brought me in and they brought a few other people in and we killed that fucking boss. Um, and, you know, we pretty much stopped raiding after that. We just kind of killed it to prove that we could kill it. And then we were like, fuck it. Let's wait until Wrath. Wrath comes out 
and the other guild killed Sartharian three drakes before we did. This was not good for morale. But we had one thing that they did not have. We had, in my opinion, our raid leader at the very end of Burning Crusade quit the guild. It's kind of weird, right? Because like he was like the he was like the defining like he defined the culture of the guild. Um he was flamboyant. He was a huge asshole. He would make people cry regularly, and I loved him. His name was Talib. And we found out that Talib was going to come back. And Talib came back to the guild. And at that time, before we'd even gotten immortal, before Ascent had even killed three drakes on 10 men, Talib came back with the 10 man Nightfall title. Like this guy had been farming like crazy. And Talib led our guild to get the first kill of Immortal. The first Naxxramas 25 Immortal. And I remember that moment that we got it, where we recaptured that glory that we used to have, and we had it again. And this time, I wasn't part of it by proxy. I was in the fucking raid. And I felt so good and that other guild, that other fucking guild, they never killed it. They never got immortal. And to be honest, we never did it again. <laughs> but um, we got it once, and that's how I got my Black Proto Drake. And that was the one fucking moment where I was like, we're in it. We're back. And I, I can never... The thing is, the reason why it was so impactful for me was the fact that it was the first time that it happened. Like, it was the first time that I ever really had, like, a huge level of success in the game. Like, and I was really able to, like, establish myself as, like, you know, I'm the top warrior on the fucking server. Uh, besides, like, there's, like, one guy in the center who's better than me. But, like, I'm the top warrior on the server. I, you know, I, I have this item that nobody else has. And, like, I can never re-experience that again. And so what this guy's saying, I, I'm bringing this back to, to, there's actually a point to my irrelevant personal anecdote that will probably be longer than the video itself. Um, the point is that, that that happened whenever I was 19 years old. I was like 18 or 19 years old. And whenever you're young like that, you don't really have a lot of dubs. You don't really get a lot of Ws. You don't get a lot of wins. Uh, you're not used to winning. You're not used to getting things like that and succeeding in that way. So the fact that I was able to do that was a huge meaningful thing for me and it, it mattered a lot. And it was like kind of a validation. It was a big, big level validation. So because I've already I've already climbed that mountain, I've already been at that peak before, uh going that I can never I can never have that happen again. I, I, I can never have that happen again. So it was circumstantial because of the place that I was in in my life. And that's exactly what he's talking about in this video. The stories I've heard back from today. them absolutely Maybe after the video. my heart because they're always amazing. They're always passionate retellings yeah. of beautiful memories. Some examples. Back in high school, you'd have finished a hard day's work. Yeah. You'd have run home, taken off your school uniform, put on your comfy clothes, Jeff would turn the computer yep. on, takes a while to boot Je up. Jeff would take his computer. I remember Jeff would, he, he lived down the street from me, and Jeff would carry his, uh, his monitor, or I would carry his monitor, and Jeff would carry his PC with like the keyboards with the little cords dragging on the sidewalk up to my house. And this would be every Friday. He'd stay the night at my house every Friday and Saturday. And him and his brother Cody would stay the night at my house and we'd all three of them would play WoW together every fucking weekend for years. It was so good. Old. You'd make a cup of tea or a cup of hot chocolate, you'd grab a biscuit while it's loading, and then you'd sit down with your guild and you'd talk yep. to your mates from class and you'd raid. Or mm -hmm. after work, when the boss is gone, you and your mates would boot up EverQuest and chat while you try to farm some mobs in the shared overworld. Or when you'd play an all-nighter and you'd only go to bed when the sun starts to rise and the birds begin to chirp. And I'm exactly the yep. same. I've had all these experiences on various games and this is where the psychology comes into it. I do not believe it was the game alone that made those memories great. I, I do think how he's right, but I do think the game having those achievements that are really hard to get and those things that you can really work toward and work towards and aspire to, 
do create a, an, an environment where those experiences can occur. I think, for example, it's much easier for that experience to occur in you know 2007's Burning Crusade than it is now in 2021's Shadowlands. Combination of your lifestyle factors. The game you have fantastic memories playing was a part of your life at the time, yeah. but it wasn't the source of your happiness alone. When I ask people about their best MMO memory, the vast majority tell me something that happened years ago, often when they were at school or college. Yeah. Very few people tell me of something that happened yesterday or last week. And I started to wonder why this was, and the answer is all of the factors outside of the game. You were younger. You likely had much more free time, and playing for eight or nine hours wasn't really an issue. Your build. I have a, I have a lot of really good memories from recent times in WoW too. Like I, I could tell some of those at some point as well, but yeah, I mean a lot of those I have a lot of very good memories. Then a lot of them are kind of dovetailed into screaming too, though, like the moose is loose, the chief long, that kind of stuff. It may have been lower if you had bills at all. Your responsibilities yeah, fewer, minimal. and you likely had a much tighter friendship group because in school or college it's much easier to make friends than in adult life. Very, Be that in the game mm, or yeah, people you true. see face to face. The game you were playing at the time was a binding agent. It brought together all of these factors and was able to give you the best experience precisely because of your lifestyle. The game would demand teamwork, which was fine because you had friends. Yeah. It demanded time and dedication, and that was okay as well because you had nothing to do outside of playing. The game was perfectly yeah. suited to fill the space in your lifestyle, regardless of what game it was. And now you're older, friendship groups drift apart, the hours your job demands get longer, Fuck. and the free time you have gets shorter. Shit. Real life issues from health to adult responsibilities Cock. are creeping in, and the demands of the MMO genre, time, close friendships, and dedication, well, they're just much harder to meet. Now, if you believe I'm wrong, and you still firmly think that older MMOs are simply better and will always give you a better experience, then try this. Go and play an okay. old MMO again. But here's the catch. You can't play one you've played before, because it's essential that we remove nostalgia from this test. If you spent your youth playing EverQuest, then yeah. playing EverQuest today will bring back memories of friendship, companionship, late nights, early mornings. It will enhance the game now because of the power of nostalgia, and that's precisely my point. Because back then, the game wasn't always the most important bit. It was the fact that the game existed during a time your life was better. You had friendship groups to share it with. You had free time to spend on it. This is depressing, number one. Uh, number two, I think a lot of people, like, and, and I, I do think the point that he's making is, like, really, uh, it, it's very... It's very essential, the point that he's making, but I don't think that it's uh, it's the unique reason. For example, a lot of people came and they played Classic WoW for the first time, and they're still playing the game. So I do think that there is an element of truth in the idea that older MMOs are in some ways better. Uh, OSRS, I think, is another example of that. I do think there is some truth in it, but I think that it's probably like 60, 40. And like, I mean, just between these two, there's obviously like a million other factors too, but like 60% nostalgia, 40% reality. OSRS, I played a little bit of OSRS. And your effort spent on the game would be rewarded. Truth be told, you could have replaced the game with any other game and you'd still have friendship, free time yeah. and hard work, meaning reward. Play a game you've never played. If you were a hardcore EverQuest fan, go and play Ultima. It's still online right now. If mm -hmm. you spent your time in classic Warcraft, go and play old school RuneScape. If you used to play Tibia, go and play Meridian 59, the first 3D MMO. It's on Steam right now and it's free because you- Have you guys ever tried that? Like going back and playing another old MMO? Like after people tell you that it's really good, like Classic WoW or OSRS, probably two good examples. Yeah, but then it's dog shit. <laughs> Like, I think that one one element of what he's talking about can't really be recreated in this because the fact of uh, of the unknown. So, for example, back whenever you were playing Ultima Online, you didn't have, like, a bunch of different YouTube websites and, and like, channels and, you know, like, Reddits that you could just look up what to do in Ultima Online. 
like a lot of them were products of their time and also products of them being new. So for example, whenever New World came out and nobody really knew a whole lot about the game except for a few chosen alpha testers, it was an experience that everybody went through together. So if you go back and you play a, an old game, you can never really recapture that because all of the different things that you know in the game are, it's because of somebody else figured it out. Yeah, it's unexplored. Right. I mean, the 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 new world part of it, like the, you know, not the game new world, but like the new unexplored world part of it is a huge element to, I think, why people are nostalgic for old MMOs is because of the uh, the sense of mystery. You will get people from absolutely all of these games telling you they are the best game ever. And yeah. they are the one true MMO and they've never found a game as good as them. But the reality and what they actually mean when they say this is there was a period in their life when they had a better life and playing this game was a thing they did during it. If you have fantastic memories of playing an MMO during a period of time in your life when you had more free time, more money and less responsibilities, and more of course hair. it's going to make the game seem far far more fun. Your first yeah. MMO is your first love. It's exciting and new and novel and everything is heightened because it's a real adventure. You'll never forget your first love. And just yep. as in the world of dating, as you go through new relationships and meet new people, the passion may fade and the spark may not be the same and you do wonder, what do I need to do to recapture this? Why isn't the person I'm talking to now making me feel like the person I was speaking to years ago? And the answer is because it's not actually the person's responsibility the feeling was that intense. It was the fact it was new and novel in your life. So many gamers tell me they're looking forward to the next big thing, the next big game they are certain will recapture that feeling they used yep. to have, but they we don't talk realize about that all it's the not the game that will do that. It's the lifestyle that they have around the game. Many gamers right now are having just as much fun as you did back in the day playing new games right now as we i don't know do you think that people maybe like new games but what about new mmos do you think people really get like the same experience with new mmos i feel like they don't and i'd be curious to talk to some people that are you know let's say like sounds weird right but i talk to some kid that's like 15 or 16 and be like listen dude like wh what is it like playing shadowlands you know you didn't grow up playing vanilla wow like what is it like and I, I I think like that's one of the cool things is you get to ask people and just fucking figure it out. The shows, yeah. I, I feel like also another reason why MMOs used to be really popular is they were one of the only avenues that were really well designed for interacting with other people online. Like the novelty of being able to interact with another human being that's in a completely different world in this online space was more novel and exciting and special in 2005 than it is now in 2021. Speak, as you watch this video, there are people chatting with guild friends on RuneScape, pulling yeah. all-nighters on Neverwinter and raiding until the early morning on Warcraft. There are children gaming with their parents on the Elder Scrolls or families racing chocobos in Final Fantasy XIV. Because while your lifestyle may have changed from the best of days, they are still firmly in them. And the games out now are just as capable at providing fantastic memories as your favorite game was back then. The games themselves are neither superior nor inferior. They are I feel like the game, the, the one game that really kind of hit that, and this is like a really kind of weird benchmark that I use, but if Fox News and CBS are doing specials about how your kid is addicted to video games, and uh you know how the kids like not doing their schoolwork anymore and you know they're getting fat and it's like all they do is play the game and they won't talk to their family like whatever game they're talking about that's a good game that's a really good game obviously and i feel like fortnite was the last one like that maybe minecraft but minecraft like comes and goes it feels but yeah fortnite was huge uh, I, I can agree with this for definitely Fortnite. I bet there's going to be a lot of kids like, let's say you're like 16 now or like, let's say you're 20 now. I, I bet you're probably really nostalgic about how Fortnite was in 2016. Like you remember like never Drake played with Ninja and that was like the, a big fucking deal for you. I, I, I bet that's I bet that's true. 
simply providing the same binding agent. They are allowing Whenever it the was. same creation of memories that you have already had to a new generation of people. If you're sat there right now and you're jaded and fed up and convinced yeah. that the MMO landscape of today just isn't as fun as it was back then, then ask yourself what would make it fun again? What would make you enjoy playing an MMO? And then be really honest and ask yourself, is it something the game would have to do? Or something that would have to change about your life? Imagine yeah. you were able to play the game, the MMO, that you loved as a kid, but you had to play it solo for the rest of your life. Would you want to do that? Or would you rather try a new MMO with a new group of friends? Because most people value the interaction more than the game itself. Yeah, it just do. goes to show yeah. you, it was never the game that made it fun. The exactly. MMO genre isn't dying, no matter who may say otherwise, and I need to make a whole video about that in the I future, agree with that. but for now let's focus on what people are missing. Waiting for a new MMO to come out to try and recapture those past memories isn't going to happen, because it was never about just the game. If you're doing that, then you are looking to the future hoping to recapture the past. You are That's hoping- That's exactly right. You know, of course you want to do that. I mean, I think that there are games though that provide an avenue to recapture that social experience and other games that provide an avenue not to. So for example, in Battle for Azeroth, there were not as many tools that you had and things that you could do to interact with other people and have those experiences occur than in Classic WoW for, for another example. And I think that's why people care so much about the social experience is because they want to be able to relive those times. And I think, yeah, obviously it's never really going to be the same, but it can remind you of what it was like. And you can have a game like BFA that's never even going to remind you of what it was like. And that's why people are so excited about Ashes of Creation or they're so excited about New World or whatever new MMO is coming out. People are really excited about them, but the games don't really capture that feeling because they don't they don't do a good job in facilitating social interaction. And that's the thing that a lot of game developers are afraid to do is they're afraid to make you have to interact with other people. But the truth is that having to interact with those other people is what really brought people out of their shell. Because I think if you really look at a lot of these, uh, you know, look at, like take the average population of society and then you take the average population of MMO players, you're going to have a higher percentage of introverted people that are in the intro that are in the MMO category versus the entire population. There's more people that are introverted and keep to themselves that play MMOs. So I think that the way that the games gave you that avenue that was safe yet fulfilling to step out of your shell and grow your character through other people help those people also grow as people personally as well. I know there's a lot of things that like I've learned about dealing with people through video games. And unless you necessitate that, you don't get those people out of their shells. That's the truth. You don't because they don't want to be out of their shells. They want to stay in their shells. And you have a game that makes it so important to get out of your shells that they feel like it's worth it and they appreciate that it happened. Actual man from makes you feel how arenas? you used to feel when it was never the game in the first place that made yeah. you feel that way. It was everything the game allowed to happen. If your favorite memory gaming, regardless of arenas the game, was chatting with your friends, then your friends made the memory. If yeah. your favorite memory was pushing through a tough dungeon, then challenge and perseverance made that one. If you have good memories of playing from sunrise to sunset, yeah. then actually it's free time and a messed up sleep schedule that made that possible. The game itself was never the star of the show because all MMOs are just time sinks and facilitators for social interaction. They're just pixels flashing on a screen. And they're all both great and awful in their own special ways. Yep. It's everything around the one you choose to play that made it truly special. MMO gamers today have access to more MMO games than ever before, from AAA titles like Final Fantasy XIV to mobile games like Old School RuneScape. We've got more ways to form guilds and communicate. Facebook, Reddit, Discord the tools to create and manage guilds and groups. Get everyone together at the same place at the same time. There are hardcore survival games, light-hearted comedy games, and everything in between. You cannot recapture your first love, but that doesn't mean no. other people aren't experiencing theirs right now. 
and you cannot go back to how your life used to be. But it is still absolutely possible, given the huge choice we have now, to find an MMO you will enjoy. Many people get angry at me when I review or say a game they enjoyed as a kid is bad, and this is strange because I'm not saying you're wrong for enjoying it. I'm saying the game itself isn't high quality, not that you didn't have fun. You're fun. A, lot of, a lot of games are products of their time. Uh, I, I think that's a good example. Like a, a lot of games, they're they're a product of their time, and uh, if you go back and you you play a game, some of them don't really age very well. But for the time that they came out, and for the experience and like the whole world around them, uh, they they were perfect. And I, I think that like I was thinking about this the other day. The best way I could create a a metaphor for like what America was like before 9/11. And I, I trust me, this is the, it's it's gonna make sense. Just bear with me, all right? Is that do you guys remember a lot of the boomers whenever McDonald's started having in their happy meals the beanie babies and every single person was going to mcdonald's every day and it was like an experience like so beanie babies came out in the 90s and there were this huge collectible item that everybody was excited for and people would go to mcdonald's because they were in happy meals and everybody thought that beanie babies were going to appreciate in value and they thought they were going to invest in these little stuffed animals and in 50 years they were going to retire on them so whenever mcdonald's came out with their limited line of happy meal beanie babies Every single fucking person was in that drive through including myself and my mother. And we were sitting there, and we would watch the news. We would watch the fucking news, and the news, like on Fox News, they wouldn't be talking about somebody going to jail for not using the right pronoun. They would be talking about the fact that the next Beanie Baby was now available from the McDonald's. And everybody that day would immediately fucking go to McDonald's and the line would be like 45 minutes long. And nowadays, that shit's never really going to happen again. Like somebody said, NFTs, it's not the same thing. It's not like the, the media is talking about it and it's just everybody, everybody's talking about this. It, it's a product of its time. It's a, Yeah, it's a simpler time in a lot of ways. And it can never happen again. Like it really, it can it can never happen again. The, the innocence of it, the to some degree decadence of it, uh, everything it, it can never happen again. But the fact that it did is special. And for those people, like yeah, it was stupid. When you look back on it, it was it was dumb. But for those people at that time, it was special. And I think that yes, another great example of this is Pokemon Go. The month that Pokemon Go came out was another one of those magical times that that will never probably happen again because that was the first AR augmented reality game that had come out that really hit the mainstream that gave people that experience of going around and reliving what they had lived whenever they were kids with Pokemon. That will probably never really happen again unless like people make money off of it. Like you can go around and find Bitcoins or something like that. And even if that was the case, it's completely different because one was done for enjoyment and the other one would be done for money. So like those first experiences, I remember seeing like videos of like a but like literally hundreds of people running around in Central Park because there was a Bulbasaur there. That's so special. And it can it, it just again. You can never step in the same river twice. That, that's, that's what it comes down to. He's right with what he's saying. It is still as valid as the day you had it. And the people having fun now, even in a different game to the one you played, they are valid too. And that's just the point. No, Quality anybody who likes video games that I don't like are wrong. Uh, it's actually not true. Um, uh, it's a generous thing for him to say, but let's just be honest. Anybody that... I enjoys things that I do not enjoy are just simply wrong. In the mechanical choices it makes and the systems it uses, the graphics, the sound, yeah, and yeah. the level design are all irrelevant in the memory you have of that fun time. The game you played as a child, as a teenager, as a young adult, you'll be nostalgic for it. You played it with yep. friends or family. You've got an emotional connection to it. You spent time learning it and were good at it, and it will stick with you forever as an adventure you went on, and no one can take that away. 
no matter how good or bad the game was. If you think the golden True age and of the real. MMO is dead and gone just because the game you enjoyed is no longer the same and you're not able to recapture that joy because of your lifestyle, I will disagree with you. I would argue we are living in the golden age of MMOs right now. Ultima... I think that's not true. Like, at all. I think that everything else that he said in the video has a lot of truth to it. I think this has relatively no truth to it. Like, maybe, like, let's say Ashes of Creation and, and New World come out and BC's out. Maybe we could be at the end of the year or the end of next year, realistically, with Ashes. But I don't feel like we are. Online is still online. EverQuest has time-locked progression servers so you can play through every expansion in order. Seems, Old School RuneScape seems, is still yeah. around and so is RuneScape 3. Meridian 59 is on Steam. Both versions of Warcraft are out, both retail yep. and classic. Guild Wars 2 is mostly free. The Elder Scrolls Online goes on sale super often and Final Fantasy 14 now has a free trial. We have more ways to have fun than ever before, but this and this is the key point to all of this. Your lifestyle has changed. There is still fun to be had. And there is well, still- the, the thing is also like, here's another part. And I remember Nixium brought this up in one of his videos. And it was one of the most poignant things that I think he's ever said. And I don't think he even realized that this was the case. But do you remember back in 2008, 2007, 2009, Whenever the new WoW uh, earnings call would happen, the new Blizzard earnings call would happen, not Blizzard Activision back then, Blizzard earnings call would happen, and they would say WoW has gone up another 600,000 subscribers. And you felt like you were part of it. You felt like you were there. You felt like you were part of something that was special. You are part of what was happening now. And that's one difference that just flat out is not the case nowadays. Uh, these MMOs live and die in one month life cycles. You don't see numbers like that happen anymore. Everybody is disconnected and you don't feel that solidarity and you don't feel like it's the same type of cult. It, like MMOs don't have the same level of cultural relevance that they did back in 2006. Like that's just the reality, they don't. and. I think all of these things come together and that's why the experience is different. Fantastic games being made and played by millions of people right now, but whether you can enjoy them as you used to yeah. depends on what kind of lifestyle you used to have and what kind you have now. The MMO genre has changed. There's no doubt yeah. about that, but we have changed more. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for okay. joining me in this episode of MM Opinion. I think that for everything that he said, except for saying that like MMOs are as good now as they used to be, or not really that, but like we're living in the golden age of MMOs right now, I don't really think that's the case because I feel like the, it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but I feel like the one big MMO that everybody was a part of is what made it part of the golden age. It's kind of like whenever Fortnite came out and everybody was playing Fortnite and you felt like you were part of something. So that that's one part of it that I do disagree with. A lot of everything else he said in the video, I think is really true. And I think he, he brings up a lot of good points. I think obviously this video, this video is supposed to be to some degree confrontational. With a lot of the people that say, oh, well, this is, you know, games used to be great back then and now they're not anymore. This video is supposed to be directly confrontational with that idea. However, I do think there's a lot of truth in it. And I agree with most of what he's saying in the video, probably 90% of it.